In this module, we're going to take a real quick look at buffer overflows. We're not going to get real far into how to develop them yourself, but we still want to understand how they take place, so it's something you can pursue later on. Modern hacking relies heavily on an application type of attack, where you're going to do attacks of the stack and perform buffer overflows to perform some other action later on. So what we want to do, we want to talk about what a buffer overflow is. We're going to go over the reasons for buffer overflow attacks. Why are these so easy to perform if we know about them? The types of buffer overflows. We'll take a quick look at stacks and shell code. We're going to look at how to detect buffer overflows in a program. We'll talk about mutating buffer overflow exploits, buffer overflow countermeasures, and then lastly, code analysis. So what we need to look at here is a buffer overflow can take place at any time. It's most likely one of the devastating attacks that you've heard about. Basically, by taking over or flooding this buffer, we can cause the system to crash and act unresponsive. Why are programs and applications vulnerable? Because they're human written. Basically, as someone is writing millions and millions line, of lines of code, or a group of people are writing millions and millions of lines of code, something can very easily be overlooked. Because of the way that the programming language works, there's times that we allow for input. Well, this input is assumed to only be a certain limit. For example, think if you were shopping for luggage, and perhaps the only place you ever travel, you're never going to be gone for more than three days. You're probably going to pick up a bag that you could store in the overhead of a plane, or even perhaps gate check. 